Hi guys, welcome back to the book club where we use real world examples to summarize and discuss one book every other week. Today, we are going on a journey into a personal transformation inspired by James Clear masterpiece, The Atomic Habit. Using practical examples, we'll be breaking down seven key takeaways that can truly transform your life and get you 1% better every day. So grab your notepad as we dive into this inner working of building habits that stick. Alright, let's kick things off with the power of tiny habits. James Clear emphasizes that significant transformation often starts with small consistent actions. Think about it like this. Imagine you want to improve your fitness. Instead of committing to an intense workout right away, you start with a 5 minute daily exercise and over time, those 5 minutes will compound into a substantial impact on your overall fitness. The compound effect is like a snowball that's rolling down a hill. It starts small but gains momentum as it goes. A classic habit is trying to cultivate a habit of reading. Instead of setting a lofty goal of reading a book a week, begin with just one page a day. It sounds almost trivial, right? But that tiny habit can build a consistent reading routine, making it more likely that you will finish the book in the long run. Next up, let's talk about the two minute rule. Let's suggest that if a habit takes less than two minutes, do it right now. This rule is a game changer for overcoming procrastination and building momentum. Imagine you want to start a daily writing habit. Instead of aiming to write an hour each day, just commit to writing a sentence or two every day. By making it ridiculously easy, you eliminate the barrier to starting. And this could be a catalyst that propels you to write even longer and achieve a more productive writing section. Now, let's apply the two minute rule to a different scenario, like learning a musical instrument. Instead of planning out a lengthy practice session, commit to playing just a single chord or scale progression for just two minutes. The beauty is this, once you start, you find yourself often going beyond the initial two minutes. The two minute rule is a very powerful strategy for breaking down tasks into manageable chunks and forming consistent habits. Moving on to habit stacking, a concept that involves integrating new habits into existing routine. Let's say you're trying to incorporate mindfulness into your daily habit. If you're already in the habit of making morning coffee, stack mindfulness on top of that routine. Use those few minutes while you wait for your coffee to brew to practice mindfulness. By linking new habits to an established one, you leverage existing behavior to create seamless integration. Also, consider the habit of staying hydrated. If you have a routine of checking your phone every hour, and let's face it, most of us do that every other minute. But let's just assume you are one of the disciplined ones and only check every hour, then start the habit of drinking a glass of water on that. Which means every time you check your phone, take a sip. Habit stacking is about creating connections between your habits, making them easy to adopt and sustain in the long run. Now let's delve into the importance of identity in habit formation. James Clare argues that lasting habits are more of who you want to become rather than what you want to achieve. So let's take the identity of a healthy person as an example. If you want to cultivate a habit of making healthier food choices, begin by seeing yourself as someone who prioritizes health. It's not just about choosing a salad over a burger, it's all about aligning your actions with the identity of a healthy conscious individual. Now think about the identity of a lifelong learner. If you want to develop a reading habit, identify as someone who values knowledge and growth. When faced with the decision to watch TV or read a book, you are more likely to choose the latter because it aligns with your identity as a lifelong learner. Shaping your identity can be a powerful catalyst for building habits that are not just temporary but integral to becoming who you are. Oh, and if you like this format of book review where I use real world examples to explain key takeaways. Do let me know in the comment section and a sub to the channel would be atomic. Let's explore the four laws of behavioral change. Make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy and make it satisfying. Now let's consider the habit of exercising. Make it obvious by laying out your workout clothes the night before. Make it attractive by choosing a form of exercise you enjoy. Make it easy by having a simple home workout routine and make it satisfying by rewarding yourself a delicious post-workout smoothie. 
By applying these laws, you create an environment that nudges you towards positive behavior, making your habit more likely to stick. Now let's apply the four laws of habit into writing. Make it obvious by setting a specific time for writing each day. Make it attractive by creating a cozy working environment. Make it easy by breaking down your writing goals into manageable tasks. Make it satisfying by acknowledging your progress and celebrating small milestones. These laws provide a practical framework for designing habits that align with your goals and lifestyle. Hitting a play two is a common challenge in habit formation and understanding the play two of latent potential is crucial for navigating this phase. Consider the habit of learning a new language. Initially, you make rapid progress, but then it feels like you hit a wall. Instead of giving up, break up the language into small and manageable chunks, focusing on mastering specific phrases and vocabulary sets and gradually expanding from there. The play tool of Latin Potential is a natural part of the learning process and by persistently refining your skills, you will eventually break through to the next level. Now, let's apply this concept to the habit of practicing a musical instrument. Initially, you make quick strides in learning basic chords, but then it feels like you are not even progressing. The play tools of Latin Potential is an invitation to deepen your practice. Instead of getting discouraged, focus on refining your techniques, exploring new musical instruments, or even challenging yourself with more complex pieces. The play tools is a temporary stage that can lead to substantial growth with consistent effort and strategic approach. Finally, let's shift our focus from goals to system. Consider the goal of improving your grades. Instead of fixating solely on achieving an A, focus on building a system for success. This could involve a specific study schedule, breaking down your assignment into manageable tasks, or regularly reviewing class materials. By concentrating on the system, you create a framework for consistent academic sources, making achieving the goals of a higher grade a natural outcome. Focusing on systems and not goals involves prioritizing the processes and habits that lead to desired outcome rather than fixating solely on specific endpoints. Another example would be, instead of focusing or setting a goal to lose 10 pounds, you could establish a system of regular exercise and a balanced diet, which in turn fosters a sustainable healthy habit. By focusing on the system, you can cultivate a lifestyle conducive to weight management and thus enhancing your long-term success. Understanding and applying these habits in your life can help you get 1% better every single day. Now imagine applying these same habits to your finances. I can see a very clear path to financial independence. So watch this video on how to change your financial life using takeaways from the psychology of money by Morgan Hauser. Remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.